Hello, everyone. This is Amy Johnson um, from downtown Tallahassee, the Florida Department of State, Division of Library Information Services. Um, we are still about a minute away from the top of the hour when we will get started with our resource sharing town hall meeting. Uh, right now, the sound of my voice uh, is just a uh, hopefully serving as a sound check uh, for uh, for folks who are um, in, already in our virtual room. We do have a, um, quite a, a lot of folks that are anticipated to attend uh, the meeting today. And so um, everyone is entering uh, the room uh, as muted because we do have so many folks who uh, are joining us today. Um, but we're glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're going to spend a little bit of time with us this afternoon. So according to everything that I can see around me, and I do have um, quite a number of uh, devices that uh, show me the current time, uh, it does uh, look to me like it is exactly two o'clock Eastern time. And so it is time for us to get started with this meeting. So again, welcome everyone to our resource sharing town hall meeting. Um, my name is Amy Johnson and I am the director of the Division of Library and Information Services uh, here in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, I am so thrilled to have so many of you joining us this afternoon for this meeting. I'm really glad that you uh, got the, uh, the message uh, the, about the meeting today um, and glad that you're here with us. Because we have so many people um, uh, who have registered for this meeting and we have so many folks attending this meeting, um, we have um, all of our attendees coming in as muted um, so that we can mitigate uh, any background noise. So please know that we're gonna have plenty of time today to answer your questions and hear your voice if you would like to ask questions and get some additional information. So we will be able to do that. Um, what you would be able to do is to type your questions into chat or into the uh, question panel, um, or you can uh, raise your hand and we can get you unmuted so that you could ask your questions once we get to that point uh, in, our, in our meeting together. But again, welcome everyone. Uh, this is Amy Johnson and we're gonna get started on our resource sharing town hall meeting. So glad you could join us. So as we get started with this meeting, um, I want to just uh, make sure uh, to give a, a huge shout out of, and thanks and gratitude to um, our partners at the Tampa Bay Library Consortium. Um, we have the Division of Library Information Services uh, and, and TBLC, we've been working uh, collectively together on resource sharing in uh, Florida, specifically related to the courier service um, since 1997. Um, in 1997, I mean, gosh, um, you know, I, I think back, uh, 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 back to 1997, um, and 24 years, uh, we've been working together with TBLC on the delivery program, the DILI program, as we as we like to call it. Um, so as we enter um, into the 24th year and sort of moving towards our 25th year of partnership with uh, TBLC, specifically related to the career service, um, we have decided to um, have a an upgrade to the program and so that is uh, why we're gathered here today is to make an announcement about um, our dilly program our beloved dilly program moving forward and one of the things that i want to make sure to um to to reiterate is that the support of resource sharing um, by the Division of Library Information Services and by the Tampa Bay Library Consortium, as well as the support provided by the four other multi-type library cooperatives and other uh, library organizations in the state, that is not changing. Uh, that part, those partnerships are strong um, and they will continue to be strong moving forward into the future. But today we're here uh, to let you know that um, we have selected a different vendor for our courier service. And that new vendor is, um, 
is UPS, so United Parcel Service, will be the vendor moving forward as of October 1st. So the courier service that we currently are under contract right now, that courier service you know, remains in place, um, but we're sort of looking forward uh, to the beginning of the, the, that start date with a, um, with a, a new vendor in UPS. And, and we would talk a little bit about, about the change and, and why we uh, sort of are going into this change. But one of the things I, I also want to let you know is as TBLC and the division started having conversations some months ago, one of the things that we did was we reached out to other states that have courier services, and especially who have courier services provided by UPS. And we wanted to hear about their experience. And we heard very good things um, from folks uh, in other states about their experience with UPS as a courier. So again, that made us um, excited about pursuing this particular opportunity. Um, what what we were able to do is that we were able to use the state term contract, which is actually an alternate contract source in order from the state, from the Department of State Division of Library Information Services, sort of the organization that I'm a part of, um, to be able to take out a contract with UPS. So they're on state contract and we were able to actually put a contract in place to get ready for this transition time. And that's actually indeed what we're launching today or what we're sort of letting you know about today is this transition as we move from the current contractor to the UPS contractor. And so one of the things that we want to make sure that you are well aware of is that with this new vendor and this change that we're making, you can expect some um, some differences in uh, service. One of those differences is that all packages will be tracked um, with a with a barcode, and um, you will be able to see where those packages are at any point in the journey, from when UPS picks it up to when they drop it off, and all points in the in the journey um, in between. So there'll be um, great tracking um, by, uh, by UPS. We also anticipate that there will be cost savings um, to, to um, all organizations involved. Um, and we're looking forward to, to, to that as well. We, we know that because of the, the um, barcodes that we'll have more accountability and better service from from the from the uh, from UPS as our vendor, so um, one of the things that we that we do know is that because this is a change, um, there's a lot of 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 things that are still being determined right now, and, and some um, uncertainty um, given the 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 change in model from the current model that we're under for our courier service to our the new model. So. But again, the things, some of the things that are not changing that I'm going to reiterate and then um, we're going to hear from Jim Walther at TBLC um, is, is our dedication to supportive resource sharing in the state of Florida, um, as well as this whole network of folks that you have uh, that are supporting resource sharing. Um, those things are not, are, are not changing at all, but we're looking forward to some of the new opportunities that this new contract will allow us to uh, to uh, uh, enjoy. So again, as as I'm going to uh, allow um, or, or or ask Jim Walther to to um, give you some information, but please know there's going to be plenty of time, like I said, for questions. So please be sure to put your uh, questions in the chat or the or the question panel. You can also raise your hand, and once we get to that part, we we definitely want to answer every question uh, that, that we can today during our time together. So with that, Jim, you want to talk about um, some of the, th the changes that you see coming down the pike? Yep, absolutely. Thank you so much, Amy, for letting me be here. Again, I'm Jim Walther. I'm the Executive Director of TBLC. And 
we are excited about this change. Um, since I've been here, we've been kind of focused on the relationship that we have both with T-Force and our member libraries that work, in, work with Zilli. And there have been some, some clear successes and obviously with every relationship, some, some clear challenges. So what TBLC is obviously focused on um, most primarily is the cost share, that the invoice that you pay for uh, from us. Um, that part of the relationship is going to continue to be our primary contact. There's lots of nuts and bolts of this project that, of course, you're probably going to have questions about. So the first thing is obviously that the invoices will continue to come from us um, to collect that cost share for the service from the libraries. And then in addition to that, we wanted to bring out the point that Amy started with, is that this entire discussion and this project shift is all about cost savings and cost sharing. And this started even when we started to look at the chance of a new RFP previously for just a different vendor, not the one that has now been selected in a different way, but just looking at what does a different vendor provide and how those costs are associated. And obviously our biggest concern in the state of Florida is cost savings and cost predictability. And so the one thing that we can walk away with today with this change, the, we will keep the rates of your cost share the exact same for the next year. So moving forward, that invoice that you're going to get from us this fall is not going to be any different. So that's the initial good news for today. In addition to just knowing that predictability of the, of the vendor that you're going to be working with. Addition to the, additionally to that, we want to make sure that the transition is a smooth one. And as Amy said, we know that there are things that we need to learn about what this is going to feel like. But the comfort that we should all have is that there are several states, dozens, that are working with UPS in a in a variety of capacities. So as you know, other as you've come from other states, or if you've worked with other states, or talked to other state like state employees that work with librarians using a system like Dilly, UPS has a hand in a lot of them. And so we know that they're going to be successful because of what they've already experienced and how they've already, the questions that they've already asked of this project. So we know that that transition, the training that we will provide in addition to the things that they've given us to support that training, those are the things that are gonna make sure that this works productively. So having not only a known vendor, but then the process that they know the customer and understand what we're moving and why we wanna know where that book is today and where it was yesterday and when it's gonna arrive at its inevitable library destination. The thing that we want to underscore for you is that our website is gonna to continue to be the home of all things Dilly and all things now Dilly UPS. And so with that, we want to make sure that you're using the TBLC delivery email address, tblcdelivery at tblc.org. That's going to be a, a point of contact, not only for training opportunities, questions, all those kinds of things that can, will continually come up in the next 90 to 100 days as we get used to this as it's launched in October 1, but then also what things are just different about the service and what we can do to help you. We know that there's lots of things that we've initially identified. And so Kira Smith and I have already identified that we need things like FAQs or transition documents that said, when you used to print a label that was going from uh, Sarasota and it was going, the book was gonna go to Dunedin, what did you do? And walk us through those processes. And we'll show you now what that's going to be like in UPS campus ship. And so those kinds of identity videos and training documents are going to be on our website. The one thing that, of course, you will notice is that when the Dilly labels are gone, that means T-Force is gone. So there are going to be Dilly-specific labels that look exactly like when you're mailing a UPS package back to any UPS delivery site. So that's going to be one of the things that we're going to get used to as well. There will be a link on our website about how to use Campus Ship because of this. And so again, it's something to learn and it'll be a different process to having a stack of labels that you know are going to go to USF. You know that you're going to send something to Ringling. Those can go away as of October 1. You'll never use those again. And so that's one of the things that is going to be a big shift that you'll have a sticky UPS label. That's a very targeted label that you can know 
where did that missing bag of books go? Those kinds of things go away as well. The one thing we want to point out with this is to make sure that you're on the Dilly newsletter and that you're getting our announcements and you're opening our emails on those Dilly blasts that we send information through Constant Contact. Again, TBLC delivery at tblc.org to make sure that you're signed up because if we send a message in early September saying we're ready to start doing something with the new project, those, that's going to be our primary focus and our source of information for you. So make sure that you're getting the Dilly email and newsletters for all staff that are interested. With this, the TBLC is already working with UPS, with the division as well, to make sure that the, all the information that's in the current label database transitions into the next database. And so there are libraries that will we have to work through some differences too. So for example, if there are, if you're a hub library, if everything goes to one location in your library and then it breaks up, then you break it apart and bring it to those other branches, we will contact you to work through those differences in the Dilly label, in the TBLC Dilly label versus the UPS label system, because some of those things are going to be local concerns that not everyone has, and it's not a specific address. The additional uh, thrill of the orange bag that everyone is talking about or has talked about and continues to look for, we are testing it with UPS uh, and the division. We've already had the conversation numerous times about whether or not we can maintain the current bag and much more to continue on that. Um, we are going to, to try it for the first 90 days and, and hope that those continue to be the bag that both the label sticks to and that it continues kind of productively and healthily through the, the conveyor belt system of UPS. And I think with any transition like this, we know that there's always things that we'll be learning over the process of the first 30 days, 90 days, first year. And we're gonna hope that those, those things that we can learn from it, make sure that the uh, system works to the best of both the library as well as TPS. We don't wanna damage library materials, but we also don't want to, to buy new bags that we don't need at this time. So we're gonna focus on trying them at October 1 as a start and making sure that people get them and they're not damaged, but and then focus on whether or not there needs to be changes down the road. So there's lots of things that are kind of question marks at this point, but we're going to hope for the best that that's our that's our best bet in terms of do not return the bags right now. We're going to continue to use them even though you're not going to be using the labels that you currently have. There are going to be lots of things that we're going to explain down the road, but the first thing that probably comes to mind, and we'll follow up with an email in regards to this as well, that the process of lost and damaged materials will be de that's developed with the division UPS and TBLC is much different as well. There's an inherent, um, uh, help me out, Kathy, with the word. There's an insurance that is obviously tied to the, the materials that they're moving around. So with that, you can assume that the claim process is much different from what currently exists with what we have to deal with with our current vendor, that an entire bag of missing materials uh, does not actually have to happen anymore. We can have a much more predictable, uh, we, with those Z numbers that they have on a UPS box or bag, we will know where those materials are. And we hope the lost and damages, it's one of the most attractive things of this relationship with UPS, is that that part of it will hopefully go away. The TBLC website and the and the Dilly section is obviously something that you want to focus your attention on in the next three months. So as Amy mentioned, the relationship with T-Force has just been announced. So they've they have known uh, within the last ten days we had a we have a sixty day out clause. So we are now entering our sixty day out clause. And so just a couple things to follow up with that relationship of the our goodbye conversation with them. Um, the first thing is that it is up to T-Force to make the decision of this what will happen to the staff if they're moved to other positions within T-Force or all kinds of things. And so the um, executive at T-Force encouraged us as much as possible to not um, engage the conversation of T-Force driver employability or employment at any point. So if the driver initiates that conversation, 
that is on the driver. The driver obviously was told by T-Force that this relationship is ending with libraries across the state. But please do not tell the drivers uh, tomorrow morning when you see them, um, I'm sorry that this relationship is ending in October because they may not know until September 20th, depending on your driver. So please do not initiate that conversation. The other thing that T-Force initially was concerned about is to have some flexibility in minimally changing service with, throughout the next eight weeks. An example of this might be that if you are a Tuesday, Thursday library, you may be asked to become a Tuesday, Friday library, just as an example, that as staffing shifts, as they move their staff to other projects, they may not be able to serve the existing contract in the exact same way. You might get two days, but they might be two different days. So more on that as we move through the next eight weeks. Lastly, um, as we're watching service challenges, uh, the Vice President of Operations and I discussed this, that as in Florida, one of the bigger challenges other than making this transition right now, it's also hurricane season. And so not only are we focused on eight weeks of ending a relationship with a vendor that is trying to focus on getting all the materials that are in circulation back to their destination, there may also be service changes because of a weather event. So with that, that becomes an additional kind of um, situation to deal with and a complication that they are open to expressing as quickly as possible that they may not be able to service hurricane season in the exact same way as they work with their other customers and their other clients. And so we, again, were asked to be flexible in that situation. So I hope that you can kind of respect some of the things that they're concerned with. Uh, obviously, it's a it's been a very long conversation and a very long relationship with not only TBLC, but your specific drivers, you may know very well. Um, and so we hope that that conversation, you will eventually be able to have that conversation at the initiation of the driver and get to have that sense that the services that you've re received from those drivers has been appreciated. And so we hope that that ends well for you as, as we hope the whole relationship ends well for the state as well as the division and TBLC. And I'll pass it back to Amy. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. Um, so we have had a couple of uh, questions coming in. Um, and so uh, I'm, I'm sure there are lots more questions out there. Uh, so we'll start with some of the questions that have, have come in um, already. One of the questions that uh, was asked is, you know, will this change, will this vendor change affect the Flynn Share It project? Um, and as just to be careful and clear, as as Jim and I have both been, uh, this is a, a, a transition time and a, a time where we're determining some of the logistics. However, with this particular question about affecting Flynn Share It, um, I, the change in vendor should not uh, affect Flynn Share It. Uh, just as we were using uh, the courier service to help deliver items that are um, that are ordered uh, through Flynn Share It, uh, the change in vendor will uh, support Flynn Share It just as um, as it currently does with the current vendor. Um, obviously, as we're moving forward in time, there may be other service enhancements and and other things that we could look at potentially. But for right now. Um, it will just be you know, a different vendor uh, on October 1st, as we've talked about. Uh, another question that came in um, is uh, the, my use of the word cost savings at the very beginning, when uh, we've also, also during this meeting announced that your rates aren't going up for, uh, for the next year, that we're, we're um, holding your uh, cost share rate at the 2020-2021 level. And, and I can see how that is uh, uh, confusing to have used those, both of those terms uh, it, within the, begin, the presentation that we've made uh, already today. So uh, let me give a little bit more about that and I'm gonna get Jim to chime in on that as well. What TBLC and the division have been doing is been uh, 
crunching numbers is what we've actually been doing to try to determine what this change means. We all know how much is currently being paid to support the, the, the current career contract. Uh, once we make this move to UPS, when we are going to be um, paying true package rates with a package delivery system, um, what we're going to be paying is per package weight and distance, just like we would uh, pay when we're mailing off birthday presents or, or Christmas presents or other sorts of things. So certainly uh, that model is something that we're all very familiar with on, on in our personal lives, as well as in our work lives as well, of course, with, with UPS. Um, so we see that, that, that there's cost savings coming. Um, the cost savings won't be necessarily to organizations on day one, of course. What we're doing, as was said, is holding that rate steady and still so that basically what we can guarantee for you is there will not be an increased cost as we go into this new model. Um, and then as we move through time and we have the data related to how much uh, is actually being shipped and how heavy and how far, um, we can then begin to provide estimates for the cost share payments that will be truer to actual costs. And we're predicting across the program, across the whole entire program for resource sharing uh, in the state of Florida, uh, which just so you all are aware, we're predicting that our business under this contract for 12 months with UPS will be in excess of three quarters of a million dollars. That's what we're projecting. Um, and so based on uh, based on history and packages moving through the current career, um, we know that utilizing the state contract is going to be making, ensuring that we're all getting the very best price possible for, um, moving these packages around in support of resource sharing. So um, uh, uh, that that is a, some uh, background around the, the, the language that was used um, earlier in the presentation. Jim, do you have anything you want to add to that? A little bit. Some of the, sure. I think that the kind of luxury of the next vendor is that there are a company that will be focused on all the analytics that will help us inform cost pricing. And I think that that's one of the things that the last vendor was not able to do. And so it's a very different model because it's it's bags only, regardless of how many bags and the drivers coming in, TBLC is getting charged regardless of what you do. Now this is all going to be kind of uh, invitation only. So if St. Lucie prints a label and says, come on down and pick up our books, then you're, there's going to be a charge associated and obviously that that is going to be studied throughout their system of how often that happens. And so there may have been ways to cut costs that we just couldn't see because there was there were no analytics other than a driver went there, a driver did something and we charged you the same amount regardless of what happened. And so that's going to be something that's going to be very different because that you know the cheapest the cheapest cost share across the state in the program is 850. Maybe there are libraries out there that do very little interlibrary loan, and that 850 is actually going to pay for a chunk of someone else's very busy interlibrary loan program. And so, with this analytic knowledge, we could maybe get to a very more realistic cost share in how much interlibrary loans happening in your specific location. And I think that that is one of the most attractive things of this as we go through in time. We're going to be able to study this and the invoices will reflect activity rather than just program that you signed up to do this, whether or not nothing came in or nothing left, the driver made their money and the company made their money. And so I think that that's one of the things that we will, as we learn through this with the new vendor and the division, I think we can spend a lot of time making sure that we're getting the most for our money rather than just paying what we were charged. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for that. We do have lots more questions. Um, and, and I just want to reiterate, this is Amy Johnson, is that 
we're starting the conversation today. We've got the newsletter, as Jim talked about, you know, so well, certainly we're getting to all your questions and, and all the things that are coming in, great questions. Um, but today's not the only day, so I don't want anybody to um, to uh, to be to think that their questions won't get answered. Um, so I do understand there are several different ways questions are coming in that we have some um, some raised hands, and so if I can um, get uh, uh, help, uh, uh, Tom, can we uh, get Teresa's question? Uh, Teresa, you're unmuted. Teresa, are you there? All right, well, we can circle back to Teresa. How about Claude? All right, not hearing anything from Claude uh, right now. We'll keep going with other questions and then we'll circle back to Teresa and Claude. Um, so a uh, couple of other questions. I'm sorry, I was, I was unmuted. I wasn't muted, I'm sorry. That's okay, go ahead, it's Teresa. Yes, Teresa, I was asking if how the packages we're gonna deliver them, how is, if anybody's gonna pick them up or we're gonna send them in the regular mail or how's that gonna work? So that's a great question, Teresa. So because this is UPS, and this will get to several of the questions that we we're having, um, and, and please also understand we're still determining uh, the the um, all the logistics. So I know that we, I've got there are lots of questions out there about you know they don't come to my branch. We're gonna we're gonna work with all of you all on that. We're not gonna be able to answer probably all of those questions today. But here's what I do know, uh, Teresa, is that, that what you will do is every library location that chooses to participate in this courier service, which we're, we're at this point making the assumption that if you're currently participating in the courier service that you will participate moving forward, um, that you will have uh, be given a campus ship account. That's just a UPS account, and that account will be um, give you access into the state account. So this is different than your county account or your city account. This is access into the state account. And what you'll do is you'll generate a shipping label. Once that label is generated, there will be a process in generating the label where you will actually and Amy's words magically, because I know it's not magic, but but uh, alert UPS that you have a package to pick up, and so they will um, they will know that you have an, an item or items that need to be picked up, and it will be UPS and UPS only. Um, I do know from using the state account, and I, this gets to some of the other questions that there are ways to indicate in in the account that I know now, this may be slightly different. So again, bear with us as we're going through this transition time to be able to deliver, um, not, not have UPS pick up, but to take the packages somewhere to a UPS location to drop them off. Bear with us, we will find out about that. Um, we will find out about that. I don't know that we have that answer today. Um, so to, Teresa, does that answer your question? Yeah, this is Claude, not Teresa, but that's okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, Claude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not okay. able to see whose whose mic is is hot, so thank you and sorry about that. But I'm I'm okay. I'm glad that that answered your question, Claude. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So a couple of other questions, um, and then I'm going to bounce over to uh back to to jim because he probably has uh, other things that he wants to add in. Um, and there are lots of questions out there, folks. So uh uh. Um, we're trying to get to all of them. Um, do we anticipate that delivery pickup will be faster? We we do anticipate that. At this point, we're being told by UPS that they anticipate the longest transit time. So let's let's just say from the Keys all the way to Pensacola that the longest transit time would be three days. Uh, so we do anticipate that we may that we would see uh, a faster uh delivery service um another question that came in what if your items are um 
need to be insured over a hundred dollars. That is just fine. You will be able, every package is insured for a hundred dollars. If you need to insure the package for more than a hundred dollars, there will be a process to do that. Um, so uh, uh, we, we know those things are, are out there and they're being determined uh, uh, right now. So Jim, based on um, everything you've seen and heard uh, thus far, uh, what else would you like to chime in on about at this point? I, I think that's actually one of the, a good thing to point out too, is that why it took so long. So even though T-Force looks like one big company, it's actually about five or six that are actually hubs within each other statewide. So even in this conversation of shifting to another vendor, we had talked about like taking it down by region and taking down hubs by region. So most things, a book having to come from Pensacola had to get to the I-4 corridor and then had to just sit there and then it had to get picked up and get down to Boca. All of those things kind of end in that relationship, which is really the speed of this new process. That it's not, it doesn't have to rely on kind of this patchwork quilt of subcontractors that goes away and so that really should make this much faster and that's what's hopefully going to get rid of kind of the warehousing and maybe the lost materials that were unclear how that happened i do want to address since we have it looks like 175 people we have not ignored uh the fact that there have been countless announcements of you of dilly bags showing up in the u.s mail we have no idea how this is happening. We have approached T-Force constantly for an investigation that this is happening on their drivers. Uh, we've talked to, to UPS, with USPS directly as to why these are actually being delivered in certain cities and whether or not they misunderstand that the bag is maybe something for blind or sight impaired and because it has the word library, they're delivering it out of altruism because it does not have postage on it. And so that was one of the concerns that where in the process did this bag lose the kind of control and authority of a T-Force employee as it left your library? And so that's another thing that this relationship we know that UPS is going to stand behind the beginning and entry point of that book all the way to its destination. And that you'll know not only that it's with a UPS employee the whole time, it's also going to the destination that it's been promised to for the price and for the fee that it's been charged to this program. So I think there's lots to gain from that process. We have we have been frustrated with that for more than a year. It wasn't just COVID. It was actually before that process that it started, before the close of COVID of Dilly, we were starting to see that somehow these were being intercepted by the mail. All right, thank you, Jim, for that. Um, it looks like um, we, um, Elizabeth White, would you like to ask a question? Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hello? Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I have a question about going back to the labels. And you said that when you generate a label, there's an alert sent to UPS. Is that something that you initiate that alert or is it automatically sent to UPS when you generate a label? Um, Does that make sense? Because yes. I, I mean, I go throughout the day, I'm putting together dilly bags and taking them up to the place in the library where they get picked up on a daily basis. And I don't want UPS to get alerted every time I do that. It, it will change my workflow, which is fine if that happens so that I can just do them all at once. But um, it, Elizabeth, that's a great question. And I don't know that we specifically have an answer about how often UPS is alerted. Um, okay. Uh, so that is a great question and as with many questions that I'm answering individually but also plan to, to bring up to the group we probably need to get more information uh, through our logistics conversations with UPS um, you know certainly I don't I don't there's nothing that we're designing between TBLC and DLIS that means that you need to change your workflow and process we may learn in the next uh, transition time about things that would mean you would wanna consider them in your process. But um, great question. Let us see what we can find out from UPS on that. Okay, thank you. 
Mm -hmm. Great. My guess that it would be kind of an end of the day batch processing that you could have like, you could run all of them that were tied to your account. But again, it, it's something that we, we need to learn as well. Great questions. All of these are great questions. And I, I agree, Jim, I, I think it probably has got to be a, a batch uh, process, but um, at least the conversations I've been uh, in on with UPS, I don't know that we've specifically asked that yet, but great question. And we will certainly get uh, clarification on that. Uh, we've got lots of other questions about, um, uh, about um, you know, well, <laughs> all kinds of things. Um, uh, and some of these we've already talked about. One question is, do you have to send one book per bag for tracking purposes? And just like right now, you do not have to. Um, you can put um, two books in a bag, um, as, obviously as, assuming the books are going the same place, of course. Um, but you absolutely, just as you're doing that now, um, what we're you know, gonna be, what the system is concerned about is uh, the bag and the address on the bag. So it will not, you will not be required to have one book, one bag. Um, will you have to calculate the, the weight of each package? No, you will not need to calculate the weight of each package. Uh, will you need special equipment, uh, like a special printer or um, anything like that? The answer is no. Uh, you'll just need to, just like you're doing now, you're printing out uh, a daily label. Well, let me say, well, I print out daily labels and send them to my, uh, well, actually to my uh, copy machine, right? Because that acts as my printer these days. Um, print it out on regular paper. Uh, and that is indeed what will be happening uh, with this with this new uh, with this new process. So you won't need any. Uh, you'll have, as we were talking about, access into this account where you will put the information in, but you won't need any special equipment. Um, we, I am seeing quite a number of questions and, and concern about individual situations at individual locations related to UPS. And, and we are going to circle back with you on these questions. Um, and please um, uh, make sure that you reach out to uh, TBLC or to us here at the division so that we can make sure that we have uh, the specifics of your, um, of your uh, individual uh, uh, concerns at your location. Uh, the, the nice thing is because we're working through a state representative or state account representative uh, uh, for this contract, um, we can um, ask questions and try to get some information about certain locations. We certainly will will be able to do that. Um, so continuing to look through questions and, and um, and so there's a question here about, uh, do we have a UPS driver that comes daily to deliver materials. Would it be the same driver? Um, my guess is absolutely yes, that it would be the same driver. Although again, uh, that's not a question I think that we've asked at this time, but I because it's because these packages will be moving through UPS, just like all your other UPS items and shipments, um, I believe that it would be uh, on the same truck with the same driver. Um, they drop off. Uh, yes, they would be able to pick up material at the same time they drop off material, assuming you've already generated the labels, um, all of those uh, sorts of things. Uh, uh, so here's a question that says, um, we're a hub, material comes to one location, how will that work? Um, if that is the way the library system wants to continue to operate, then that is the way that will continue to be. Um, all the UPS packages would come to that one location. Um, that is something that I believe that was brought up um, a little earlier today, that any library system um, does have the ability to rethink that. Um, if you want to keep the hub scenario within a library organization, that's perfectly fine. Uh, if you want to look at a different model, now that we're going to have a different vendor, that would be okay as well. Um, so, Jim, do you have anything you want to add at this point? Because I'm just kind of uh, going down the list here. Yeah, and that's, feel free to email uh, either TBLC delivery that question or me, Jim, at tblc.org. That's a very common model. I, you know, I think a polk that everything goes to Bartow and then 
They have their own driver vans that move things around that county. Nothing needs to change because of that. If you want it to change, that's now's your time to do that if you want, or March of 2022 is your time to do that. You've got, we're not pushing anything on that. We're going to replicate the point of service that T-Force has with UPS. So unless you tell us, we want you to go to all of our locations now. So please build out the label database to do that. That's a different conversation that's different from what we're just announcing today. Great, thank you, Jim. So a couple of other questions. Um, so here's a question. Uh, will we continue to send items once a week like we do with the current vendor? Um, certainly that is, again, in sort of that workflow question that we had um, earlier, uh, certainly could be the way that you would do things, but uh, you wouldn't have to. You, Because we're moving to a true package model, you could uh, send items as frequently as uh, every day, Monday through Friday, uh, if that if you have packages that need to go. So um, that is certainly, again, would be, um, to some degree, your call on a workflow. Obviously, for um, fr from from the service standpoint, um, it, it certainly, I think, is, is a, a better service model to send the items out once they're ready and not hold them uh, for once a week. Uh, both from the end user point of view as well as the lending point of view. But again, that's a, a workflow consideration and um, uh, you certainly could be done uh, once a week if that's uh, the way that makes sense in your workflow. Um, how are items being packaged for UPS? Um, so what we're what the I, the way items are being packaged is in the orange bags that uh, that we all uh, know and love. Um, we uh, Jim did talk about that uh, at the at the beginning. Uh, we're going to continue to use the orange bags, um, and um, we because it is a new service and a new process and new equipment. Um, we will be watching uh, the wear and tear on those bags, uh, but the but the, the orange bags will continue. So again, much more gonna come out about this uh, later about that. Um, Jim, anything you wanna add about that? We've, been, no, we've already started kind of studying what else is out there. There's a lot of padded versions, even in orange. So um, if you have purchased any books from used bookstores, a lot of them use kind of a slippery, slippery white bag that is pretty cheap that kind of 10 cents, I think. And so we've looked at the bubble mailers that we could purchase. We could obviously get them in orange. We could get them kind of some, but they're single use bags. If the current bags work as long as, as they don't tear on conveyor belts, I think we want to at least get through the current supply that we have. The bags that are in place are not cheap. Um, the, the smaller bag is about a six and a half, six dollars six and a half dollars um, and the bigger bag is about an eight dollar bag so I don't really want to throw away thousands of bags that are out there in circulation until we have to if they're already uh, clearly you know tired dirty and torn probably not the best bag to use at the, is going to hit a conveyor belt now instead of the back of someone's van so you might want to look at you take the time in the next two months to look at the bags that are in your library and think this is a good bag for stuffing or we could wrap a book in this bag and put it in another bag. That might be the best use of that bag. Or literally maybe do some weeding of bags. We're gonna try as much as possible to, to at least the, use the current inventory, but we don't want them sent back to us, CBLC, or um, you know, not use them in their current form. The other way, the other thing that we've talked about with the division, and I think this is important as well, we may also want to use the next eight weeks to try to kind of slow down interlibrary loan at certain points. Um, and, and that is another reason to make sure that you get our constant contact announcements through TBLC. Because there might be times that we feel like there are a lot of missing books coming in. There are a lot of wet books coming in. And a lot of this may be because the driver has been notified that they are losing their job. And so let's be obvious focused on the fact that we want them to do the best of job 
but maybe there will be a fall off in September that performance and quality isn't what we expect. And so if we start hearing in our email exchange with libraries that hundreds of books are starting to be lost or that are slow to be returned, that is a concern for us that we, Amy and I have talked about this several times, is there a point that we just kind of raise the white flag and say, let's slow down in our library loan. I think the vendor will also have to start to, the current vendor will have to slow down their warehouse operations for those hubs to clean out those hubs of existing bags and just a, a, existing uh, kind of stock at the end of the day and those kinds of things. And so if that happens, the last 10 days of September will be a, probably a challenge to get it. We don't want it to be the busiest month that they've ever seen because of that. They're going to have to really kind of say goodbye to this project in a kind of clean the warehouse out and, and bring it to their destination. We don't want them just to dump it at the nearest library. Um, we want them to get it to the destination. But because of that hub system, it might take four days. So, you know, when you think of, you know, your flight connecting somewhere, if you have to go through Detroit to get to San Francisco, the same thing is true for that bag. That may be a challenge if they've already started to close the Orlando warehouse hub it might not get to West Florida. So we want to slow down that process for some of those materials at the end of September. Great, thank you, Jim. Um, lots, of, um, lots of great questions and quite a number of questions that are coming in are, um, are, are talking about specific delivery, um, where UPS delivers on your campus or within your physical plant. Um, and um, obviously there are lots of questions about that and whether uh, this now means that the UPS person uh, would not, would deliver you know some packages one place and some packages another place. I do think we definitely need to talk through that with you all. Um, but I think that is to some degree um, a, a a conversation that might be best because it's so site specific uh, that handled as we're moving forward with uh, UPS and as we learn more in logistics uh, to be able to share with you all and then to work out on those spe specific, sorry, hard to, it's hard to say that, I had to get those S's out. Um, another thing that has come up is um, related to um, uh, how we're going to secure the bags and at this point, so circling back we are talking about our current uh orange courier bags our current orange dilly bags um and uh, we have been told by ups that we should be securing them with zip ties and we'll be able to provide those to you as well um and so we we do anticipate uh, needing to do that uh, there have been a couple of uh comments about um not wanting to use uh, uh, uh uh, single use bags and also the uh, expense to local libraries um, related to shipping materials and certainly again as we've always been doing in this uh, in this uh, particular uh, with Dilly uh, where uh, the state and TBLC have been uh, providing and of course with with local call share dollars but sort of in this grand picture of all of us working together been uh, uh, so providing those supplies and we do at this time anticipate that that will continue um, and so uh, just yeah, uh, just know that we all have that same vision right along with you moving forward um, there's some comments here place a paperback or a book that needs extra cushion in a used mailer and then place that in the dilly bag that's a great suggestion of course um, there are a number of questions related to um, sort of uh, potentially, and Jim, I think this one is a good question for you, sort of, and you were talking about this, um, it, uh, is sort of that sort of potential, that, that slowdown, you know, or that sort of um, as we're moving into this true transition time, um, as we get into, you know, September, certainly, um, and, and what that might look like and how folks might need to, think in terms of slowing down or um, or or winding up uh, uh, related to the the, the the 
current courier service versus the future courier service. Um, do you um, do you want to talk any more about that, Jim? I know you mentioned that a, a minute ago. Yeah, I I think that the the current vendor hadn't really seen staff levels ever retain what they had before the month that we closed for COVID. So when we came back, we closed, remind me again, we closed all of April, is that right? So we closed, or did we close all of May? We closed all of April. When we came back after the governor's order, um, I think that they probably lost 30% of their staff. And so because of that, they were that was always a challenge. It was definitely a challenge in Southeast Florida. So if you are in Cephalin libraries, you have clearly seen lots of slow or missed dri drivers that come at a different time of day, drivers that never come at all. That has continually been a problem since we closed for COVID um, because people went and got another job because we were closed for four weeks. I think that's why they're very cautious to announce the change right now because they're concerned of how many people will immediately go get a job that they will not be able to service August, uh, September at all. And so if that is the fact, I think they will, uh, our hope is that they'll be honest about that and say, we can't service certain sections of the state anymore. Um, and that's, we will communicate that if we have, when we have that conversation. I offer the um, availability for us to talk with them every week. If we want to do like a Friday meeting, I will talk to them and make sure that, you know, staffing is in place and there are, they don't see it, foresee any problems for the next week. But if we get to that point after Labor Day or a hurricane season and they say, you know, we announced this, the, the change will happen in October and we're not going to be able to move all of our drivers to different positions and 20 of them left, uh, they might not be able to service Miami. They might not be able to serve Lee County. Like we don't, they don't know that yet, but they might find that out once they make those employment decisions. And so we will communicate that if they communicate it to us as much as possible. Thank you, Jim. Um, so we got um, other questions. Um, some folks who are not um, thrilled with the idea on the zip ties um, for the bags. Um, that is something that UPS is telling us that we need to do. Uh, their concern, as I understand it being voiced by UPS, is that the zippers could get um, I guess opened on the conveyor belt and materials could fall out. And so the zip tie is um, securing the, the bag. Um, certainly, again, Today, just being the first day, we're sort of bringing these things up um, and there's going to be lots more conversation. But at this point, UPS is uh, with it, with our current bag. That is what they're saying uh, we, we need to, to do. Um, another question here that Dilly is statewide, which is absolutely true. Proud Florida uh, service, uh, but also send books that go out of state. Will we be able to uh, use this particular system to send books uh, by UPS out of state? And the answer is uh, no, you won't. You won't be able to do that. This is a um, a Florida contract for Florida uh, for Florida postage rates through UPS, and so. Um, the the, uh, the 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 program we've put together as well as we we, we are beginning to understand uh, what the campus ship uh, process will look like um, uh, we believe that you would not be able to send a package out of state again we're st ourselves just getting into the logistics of of all of this. So more to come as we roll out training and the information on the webpage, as Jim was describing on TBLC's webpage, as we're moving and putting the new information out on that webpage. Um, uh, at this point, the we uh, the uh, TBLC and uh, will be providing uh, zip ties. Uh, so again, more information on that uh, to come as we as we move closer to this time when we're going to be uh, with a new vendor. Um, uh, another request about should, you know another another question about sort of that time where we might want to be uh, or a question about limiting requests. Um, as we move into this transition time uh, in uh, in the, the deeper in the fall, sort of into September. Um, again, I think this is why it's really important to to make sure you're on the mailing list uh, that Jim talked about the, uh, the the mailing list. 
uh, with the delay newsletter. Um, there also are going to be other opportunities for us to get together and just um, have conversations um, and, and share information, uh, as well as uh, building out the logistics support um, on the TBLC webpage. So lots and lots of information uh, yet to come. You all are asking great questions and bringing up great, great points, uh, some of which are just things that we uh, we don't currently know or, or have uh, and uh, knowledge about at the current time. Um, so Jim, anything else you wanna add at this point? I, I'll go back to that. I think that one of the things that Kathy suggested, and we're gonna talk about this and get it to people next week about office hours. So I think it'll be similar to this, but maybe a little bit more specific to everyone's questions. Um, and I think that that will be helpful. We'll do them several times in August and September just to kind of help us through. We don't have all the answers yet, so it's not training, but I do think it's the things that really identify uh, the things that we need to work on, what kind of training needs to be offered, what training documents or FAQ PDFs, what, what needs to be on our website, all those kinds of things that you know will help us guide through the, the next year, not just the next eight weeks. Great, great, great point. Yes, still, still plenty to um to to be determined. Um, so it's looking to me like um again for the sort of generalized questions um that we have um we've answered a lot of them. I'm sure you still have questions, so keep them coming or raise your hand. Um, and uh, Teresa, if you're back and and wanting to do a question, we certainly could um. Could, would be glad to hear your question. Uh, certainly a lot of um, questions and, and comments here about being environmentally conscious and uh, not uh, liking the single use bags, also not liking the um, a zip tie in, in, in it, a single use zip tie or a plastic zip tie and what are the possibilities of other kinds of uh, more uh, 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 reusable uh, uh, ways to secure the bag. Those are certainly things that we can look into and, and uh, we'll get a UPS to give us some guidance on that. Um, uh, then, then here's a question about um, uh, would it help if, um, if, if, and this is a great question, I'm just throwing this out into the universe and Jim, I'll, I'll sort of uh, look virtually uh, at you in, in this sort of in thinking as, as we are moving forward. But this particular question says, you know, as we're moving forward to this transition, would it help if we made sure that none of the books that are shipped out in the next few weeks, um, if, if we make sure that their due dates are sort of longer term so that they wouldn't, that they would um, not have a due date that would be say mid to end um, uh, uh, September. Uh, and so sort of bumping out due dates yeah. so that to make sure they're not in that, caught in that transition quite so much. Yeah. I, would, I would think that, you know, if you could target things to October 5 or something in your system that we know we're on the other side of it, that would be awesome. That would be excellent. Great, great. So, so I would say that probably again in the office hours we talked about, and in some of the um, the, the logistics that we'll have put together and, and built uh, for the web page, would include some of these great suggestions that are that are um, that are that are uh, out there and coming in right now. So, there's a question about how to get added to the email list, and that is you can send an email uh, to TBLC Delivery at tblc.org um, and I will try in just a second to get that email put into the chat uh, so that everybody can see it. Um, well, uh, we'll um, that's the email address so I'll get that typed out here in just a second. Um, um, so another question about bags, TBLC has um, been historically purchasing uh, these orange dilly bags and that is indeed where we are intending to move into the into this transition is that we'll be using the same uh, courier bags that we're currently using as long as they're in good shape those bags will continue with us uh, as we move to the uh, new vendor um, so here's a question, will the transition affect anyone whose renewal is in September? And I'm assuming that means a renewal for Dilly 
I'm, I'm might not be interpreting that correctly. Does that, uh, Jim, is that question, um, will the transition? Yeah, we're going to do all the renewals at the same time. Um, so we'll, it'll just be our fiscal year, which is October 1. So none of that will change for anyone. All right, great. Thank you, thank you. Glad that. Uh, thank you, Jim. So then here's a question for colleges with more than one campus. Will items be delivered to a specific campus or will they be routed to the main college campus? That's a local decision. You've, you're currently have made a decision uh, related to the current vendor, uh, the current delivery vendor. And that decision is again up to the institution uh, as we are moving into this new vendor. Um, I will tell you that for right now, and it's only just to start this conversation with UPS from TBLC and DLIS to UPS, what we've done is taken the current model as you're describing where everything goes to one campus, that's the model we have presented to UPS. But if you all decide, uh, Rachel, that you want to have delivery to more than one campus and not have everything go one place, that is something that can change. There's gonna be more information about that as we're moving through this transition time. Um, again, that would be a local decision about how many places you would like to have things delivered. Uh, good, and here's um, uh, somebody who has happened to already uh, leave for today since we, um, we've, we're we we're scheduled to go to 3.30, but I realize some people may have other things that they need to get to this afternoon. Uh, but here's a uh, thanks for hosting this particular uh, event. Um, it's been a great way of talking about the change and appreciate being able to share thoughts and questions. So I'm glad that this has felt productive. Um, yes, more stay away from single use. I, I hear you, I hear you. Uh, uh, we're we're going to do our best. Um, we're certainly going to we're going to try for that. Um, yes, great. The uh, the the webinar, this particular this town hall meeting, um, is being recorded, and so that recording will be available for folks um, to share with others or to uh, watch again <laughs> or listen to again. Um, so books sent out before the transition, will they be able to be returned with UPS? Absolutely. If you send something, let me, I'm going to try to do this in my head. If you sent out a book today, it would go out under the current courier. If the due date, oh gosh, I got a Flynn share book myself um, just last week. This is a great example. All right. So the, I, I got a, an interlibrary loan book. Um, and, and it came to me through the current courier. It's not due back until November 11th. So when um, my wonderful friends here in the State Library return that book through the courier service, it'll be returned through the, um, through the new courier. So absolutely, could, you could send it out in using the current courier and it could be returned using the, uh, the, the, the UPS courier after October 1st. Great question, absolutely. And that indeed is how my book will, will happen unless I get done with it earlier. But anyway, I'm enjoying it. So, uh, all right, so um, thank you so much. Uh, here's a, here's a, um, a comment. Thank you so much for the work between DLIS and TBLC in establishing a secure, consistent, financially responsible system available to us. What a great way to more quickly service our patrons statewide. Kudos to all of us. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, so, um, uh, so uh, thank you for the, those, those thanks. Um, email to register and I think Kathy put that in the chat thank you Kathy thank you thank you um, appreciate that uh, double bagged. Um, so some other questions about again uh, sort of trying to get away from the zip ties we'll certainly investigate all um, options there and um, we'll work that through with UPS and see what we can do um, so I, I at this point um, okay okay maybe another question uh, Claude Hi. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Hi, Claude. Yes, hi. Uh, I was saying I have a I have a concern about the orange bag that if we're gonna put the label on it, it's not gonna stick. Even if we tape it, it's not gonna stay. And it's, if we're gonna yes. lose the label and we lose the right. package. 
Right, right. And, and, and we are working on that and with the logistics. That's been part of the work that TBLC and DLIS have been doing uh, for the last several weeks and our conversations with UPS. We are working on that. We don't have a solution for you yet. Good. Uh, you're spot on, Claude. Um, but just stay tuned. That's why it's going to be really important to continue to you know, be in tune with the newsletters, uh, perhaps attend some of the office hours that we're going to hold, because as we get these um, items resolved, we're going to be able to tell you what the process is going to be. And right now today, uh, we, we know what won't work. Uh, we haven't yet uh, figured out um, how to solve all the solutions, and we are in conversation with uh, UPS to be able to to get to the to the answers for this, and and I've, it's like we talked about, we have other states that we can draw on as well and find out what's working for them. So we're on it, we're working on that. Great point, thank you, Claude. Okay, thank you, mm -hmm. uh, Jim. What what have you got to add at this point about it, this topic or any other? I think that's good. I mean, I think that that's one of the things that we were concerned with in our, one of our last calls in August, in July, was that how would we get that sticky label, you know, to attached to an essentially a nylon bag. So we are definitely focused on it. And not, like we said, they've got other relationships like this that they know that this works in other ways. So we'll work to identify we, if we can do exactly the same thing. Our bag vendor is focused on this as well. They're going to find us a solution. Um, they've been, we've done lots of different things. We're moving the label holder around the bag and all kinds of things like that, moving the grommets for the zip ties. So we will find a solution with both vendors moving forward. Great, great. Absolutely. So we're at 310. Um, we, um, it, we will, um, you know, we're scheduled to be here until 3.30 and we certainly can stay at this point. We're really just um, sort of watching the questions uh, come in and they're not coming in nearly as, as fast as they were um, a little bit, a little while ago. Um, it, it, so some of the questions that are, um, uh, that, that are being, we're sort of back to the, to the label on the current bag. Um, and and so one of the questions is if we print a ups label on regular paper would it be able to fit in a sleeve and it absolutely will fit in a sleeve the the challenge we're having right now is the sleeve does not adhere to the nylon uh, dilly bag and so again as jim has pointed out and has been mentioned a couple of times we're working to determine what will be the remedy for that um, and so know that we're working on that and that's exactly why we have this transition time so that we can figure out what is the best way and and the the, vent, the bag vendor and other states um, all of those will be things that we will be looking at and we'll be able to give you an answer as we get to october 1st but today all we can tell you is is that we are we're doing all this research ourselves and investigating um, do we need special paper for the labels no you'll be able to use uh, the exact same paper you're using right now for your dilly labels uh, well and I, I don't know what paper you're using but I know that I'm using my um, my paper that comes you know out of my out of my uh, networked printer out of my or otherwise known as a copy machine right so um, you're going to be able to print labels uh, uh, just like that um, uh, so there's a suggestion here about uh, gluing Velcro uh, to the bag. Uh, that that is certainly something that we're talking about. Uh, we're worried about the wear and tear on the bags. Um, and so again, great suggestions. All these suggestions. We're working with UPS and with our bag vendor to determine a solution uh, uh, for that. Uh, sliding into the window currently on the orange bag. That window is not big enough. Uh, for the label, um, and and nor is that window um, secure. It doesn't close, uh, for lack of a better word from Amy, this uh, time of the afternoon. Uh, so that particular window, the existing window on the door, on the existing dilly bags, uh, does not uh, does not fit that need. Uh, again, with our bag vendor, uh, with uh, that we're looking at other possibilities for other kinds of windows. Um, so. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look into that. Um, 
Yes, the when, yes, the labels you print right now absolutely do fit in that uh, window on our orange bag, which which is wonderful. That was all designed together. The uh, the current label database and the and the window on the bag are all designed together. As we move to this new vendor, uh, we have a different size uh, a different size label, so we'll have to work on a, a, a different way to get the labels on the bags. So, yes, all great suggestions, and you're all thinking exactly like we are, um, and and trying to resolve these uh, the, these issues. So that's really wonderful. Uh, just as a quick uh, reminder, we are recording this set session is the word I'm looking for and um, we will be able to uh, send out that uh, that recording to to everyone that is registered and and everyone that is here so that you would have uh, that uh, at your fingertips we'll also put it up on our uh, on the division's uh, YouTube channel, and I, I imagine that TBLC would probably uh, put it up on their webpage also, if if that's something that that sounds like uh, that uh, would work. Uh, I, I please do not order any uh, uh, supplies at this point uh, until uh, we're given uh, until we know what supplies will actually work. Uh, uh, the we um, we are we are working through with the bag vendor. Uh, as well as UPS uh, to determine what will be the best ways to get uh, the uh, the information that's needed on the bag for delivery. So, um, so and we will have a master list of libraries, um, and that will be in the campus ship uh, account once you're given access into that account. So you will still have access to that. So again, it's this. These are all great questions and great things that you're thinking about right along with us. Um, so. Um, uh, I think with that, Jim, what else have, what, what else has come to mind that you've been hearing? And oh, and it looks like we have maybe some other, uh, oh, I see, I'm sorry, I don't know how to read this. So Jim, what else have you, <laughs> what else are you thinking about have, hearing me prattle on for a while? Yeah, I think this is really helpful. Uh, the other point of contact that of course we'll focus on is whether or not um, you'll have a, either a direct kind of call number for lost books with UPS or, or contact points like that. How you'll work with our uh, TBLC delivery triage email might be different in the next 12 months. So that's another thing that we'll focus on kind of working through. We don't feel like that's gonna be as busy of a service as much as um, just making sure that people understand how things work. So we might spend more time doing maybe regular training about how the labels are working or what might be frustrating. Also, if you're doing bulk, you know, we've talked a lot about book to book today, but if you're doing multiple books to lo one location, there's nothing stopping you from grabbing a box from just what came in from Baker and Taylor and using that, that box and putting those books in that and putting that in UPS with a UPS label. So there's all kinds of things that, it doesn't have to be just focused on the dilly bag. It can be focused on how UPS works regardless of, of what the materials are. So we, I think you'll, we'll, we'll learn that more as we go along. Great, thank you. So what other questions do we have? I keep kind of going back and forth through the, the questions that have come in, but I think we've addressed uh, most of the general questions. And again, just as a reminder, we've talked about it before, but stay tuned. There are going to be plenty more emails coming out. There are going to be other opportunities to get together for meetings, um, uh, more uh, probably give and take smaller meetings where we can uh, maybe hear your voices a, a, a little bit uh, more directly as opposed to through your fingertips. Um, uh, but plenty more information is coming. You know, we're just sort of wanted to make this announcement today uh, to be able to get this information out to you um, and as as quickly as we could because we, this change is coming in the next coming in the next few months. Uh, so there is a question: What if we need more orange bags now? If you need more orange bags now, you need to get in touch with TBLC just like you've been doing in the past. Again, that that piece is is has not changed. You can use that uh, TBLC delivery at tblc.org uh, email address and let them know that you need more orange bags now. So Jim, any other additional thoughts from you um, related to any of the things that we've talked about today? 
I think I'm good. I'm I'm sure that with our office hours with that throughout August and September, we'll identify a lot. So thank you so much for letting us talk to you today. Yeah, yeah, it's been great. There, I, and I will say there's there's there have been a couple of questions about statistics and what will those statistics, what will those monthly statistics look like and how they'll be reported. Um, Jim, what have you all done? Any kind of think about that? I was thinking about that last night. I, I think it goes to this whole um, kind of analytics piece that a, a different vendor will behave differently. And so I, I think we'll start with, you know, collecting, please keep your tally statistics like you do. Um, but I think we might come back to you in February of 22 and say, we don't need to do that anymore because I can tell you, Sarasota, that you're sending nine books a month to St. Lucie County. So we we may be able to see better because of who the vendor is, what you're actually doing. And so, but for, for October, November, December, let's focus on doing stats the exact same way you currently do, keep a tally in your library, upload them to the Google Sheet on our website. But it's an excellent question. And I think that that by and large, not only informs kind of how we can make sure that this is the most cost savings focused program that we have, it can also be very targeted into who should be paying for what based on what usage is out there. Because we, we can't do that with the current vendor at all. I mean, there's all kinds of assumptions, but that's all they are. Just based on distance, you would assume that, you know, the farthest, farthest library is the most expensive book, but maybe not. So keep your stats. Um, we're going to watch that very closely with the next vendor. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Great, great. And of course, the statistics that we're getting, keeping now and um, and we'll have uh, into the future with the new vendor really is at a bag level, um, you know, at, and we will know much more. So great. Thank you for continuing to keep those statistics. Um, they, they do tell a story. And I we as Jim said, the story will be much more complete uh, with with our new vendor because we'll be able to, to, to see so much more. Uh, so another question, if TBLC sends any promotional materials, uh, will it also come UPS uh, starting in October? And I think the answer to that is probably definitely yes, because uh, that will be the courier uh, at, 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 at that point uh, in, in October. I, likewise, when the division sends out uh, items, uh, we'll be using the courier as we always have, and, and it will be uh, whatever is the current courier of the moment is how we will get things sent out, and, and as of October, it will be with our new, um, our new UPS courier. So, uh, uh, yes, that we'll all be using that and looking, looking forward to uh, continuing to strengthen resource sharing in the state of Florida, continuing to um, enjoy uh, the, the, the way that Florida is so wonderful to share with each other through resource sharing and specifically through our, uh, through our uh, Dilly uh, Courier, uh, Dilly Delivery Service. It's really wonderful really wonderful. So we're at about nine minutes until uh, 3.30. Uh, the, the questions really have slowed down, uh, so I don't want to um, uh, uh, necessarily belabor our time together, uh, but um, but uh, just want to make sure that we have an opportunity to answer any questions that come in. And, and as we've said today, some of the some of the answers have been great question. We'll get back to you with more information because it's still being determined uh, during this transition time. And another plug for our Dilly newsletter, uh, as well as other forms of communication that will be coming uh, to you uh, from your multi-type library cooperative, um, from from Florida Virtual Campus sources, uh, as well as from the division. So just stay tuned, keep your eyes open, because uh, there's going to be lots more information that we're going to need to share in the, over the coming over the coming months. Uh, so there's a question, what about missing books that you have now? Uh, that is something that TBLC is working on and will be continuing to work on with you. Uh, they are well aware of those missing books and so um, they will be continuing to work with libraries directly on that. Jim, do you have anything else you wanna say about yeah. missing books at this point? Yep, we're gonna clean up the list before we wanna to get to that in this fiscal year. So you're gonna be contacted by John, our intern, whether or not you accept um, replacement. We're going to get all those done by the time we transition out. Great. 
great, great. Thank you. Yeah, so um, that's something that we're, we're, that um, will be ongoing and continuing now through September 30 uh, and, and, and as needed into the future, but obviously it'll be handled in a different way when we go to our, our new vendor. Uh, it says, okay, and then Jim, here's a question for you. Does the Dilly newsletter come through the TBLC delivery at tblc.org email address? It does. Um, actually, yeah, it, it does. And sometimes it, the reply, if your reply comes from me, um, most of the time it's TBLC delivery, it's through constant contact. Yeah, it, they all, all of our announcements look the same. But if you Her. reply to it, it'll usually the reply is right back to TBLC. Great, great. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. So thank you all so very much for being online with us today at our resource sharing town hall. We're so glad that you spent some time with us. We're so thankful uh, for your dedication to providing services to uh, the, your patrons uh, and your, your customers, your students. Uh, thank you for the work that you do every single day, day in and day out, serving uh, your your communities. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we're thankful to to uh, to be in support of the work that you do every day. And we're extremely thankful for at the Division of Library Information Services for our partners. Uh, in this case, when with Dilly in particular, our partner at Tampa Bay Library Consortium, but of course our partners um, in many other organizations, the other multi-type library cooperatives, Florida Virtual Campus, the Florida Library Association, many other wonderful organizations, and, and, and on the libraries all across the state. Um, we really, uh, we really uh, love being partners with all of you all and in, in providing services and, um, and, and in, in watching and, and observing the wonderful work that you all do uh, day in and day out. So with that, Jim, any final comments from you? Anything else you want to add? I think I'm good. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Yes, thank you for being here, and thank you for uh, for for you and TBLC staff for for supporting uh, the courier service and resource sharing um, uh, for uh, over 24 years. Now, here's to another 24 years. I know you all can't see it. I'm raising my glass of water here. Here's to another <laughs> 24 years of, of resource sharing across the state of Florida. Um, and and thanks to all of you for for attending. Um, uh, so we really appreciate that. Do you have a couple of more questions coming in? Um, so still, will we still be using the OCLC code to find ad addresses? Uh, I think that's a logistical piece that I'm not sure that we know the answer to quite yet. Um, certainly we will continue to record um, for, for purposes of resource sharing um, the OCLC code, but whether that'll be part of the campus ship database, I'm not sure. So we will find out and let you know. Um, that'll be part of that training that Jim talked about and the, and the kind of training that, that you might want or need as we're moving into this transition. Uh, lots of folks saying thank you for the, uh, for the opportunity today and thank you for, um, for, for, for this particular town hall. And, and of course, I would just say right back to you, thank you to all of you for everything that you all do. We really appreciate uh, everything that, that you all do on behalf of the state of Florida and, and we absolutely are keeping the OCLC codes not not gonna do anything and not gonna take uh, get rid of the OCLC codes just not sure how they will work in the UPS system uh, but stay tuned on that uh, again we will let you know what we learn about that and um, certainly that would be very handy if that was a, a way that we could search uh, inside the the campus ship system. Let's see what we can do about that. Great suggestion, great suggestion. So lots more to learn. Uh, thanks everybody. It looks like folks are kind of uh, wrapping up and popping off and that is perfectly fine because we've only got about three more minutes until, uh, the, until the session is over. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the questions and just see uh, if any other questions come in, but uh, thank you all very, very much for being here, being present today and for being excited about our upcoming change. We, we're we excited right along with you and we're really excited to be able to have made this announcement today um, and, and to be able to share this news with you. So thank you. I'm gonna mute for a moment and take a, a drink of water. All right, I'll be right back.
All right, thanks everyone. This is Amy Johnson and we're at two minutes. Um, just watching folks as they're logging out and um, as they're uh, providing sort of their goodbyes here in the in the question panel. So um, thank you all for joining us. Um, it, don't see any other questions uh, coming in, um, but uh, we look forward to the next time that we're together to talk about resource sharing in the state of Florida and to be able to, um, to uh, provide additional information to you. So we're at 329. At this point, um, the, there really are, there are no more questions coming in. So thank you all very much for attending today. We will go ahead and close out this webinar, close out this town hall meeting. Thank you all. Bye-bye.